I'm a big believer in using a writing format that enhances the reader's experience. This includes standards and basics, like putting dialogue in quotation marks, or using italics for character thoughts and emphasis. But sometimes it means thinking outside the box and finding a format that reflects your character's perspective. So today I want to talk about Shooter by Carolyn Pignut, How to Read Like a Writer. Her story does just that. Her format enhances her character's perspectives. She has five point of view main characters. Each one has a unique world view and voice. And she uses format not only to show their world view, but also to help the reader keep track of which character's perspective they are in in a given chapter. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with Queen Bee Isabel's text messages. Isabel's point of view is a straightforward, traditional, first-person point of view. It's formatted accordingly for most of her chapters. But because of the situation the characters are in, she's the only main character or point of view character with a phone. And she's texting a friend. What that means is any time a reader sees text messages, they know they are in Isabel's point of view. Here's an excerpt of how Pignat uses those text messages not just to signal it's Isabella's point of view, but also to show a bit about her personality, her desires, and her priorities. Izzy, are you okay to text? I don't want to get you in trouble. Or draw attention with the buzzing. Bree, on mute. Texting is my lifeline, seriously. This whole thing is insane. I can't stop shaking. You doing okay? Izzy. Yeah, if you think being stuck in a washroom with Hogan and Xander Watt is okay. The first thing I want to note is Pignat formatted these text messages like a play. What that means is it is clear who is saying what and when. All the time in this text exchange. A reader's never wondering, wait, who said that? Or when was this? They know. So if you're going to use something like text messages, your format is important for clarity. The other thing we get here is that teenage perspective. Pignat used a mixture of proper English, slang, and emojis to show these are two teenage girls talking. These make the text messages feel real. Also, notice how the characters are familiar with each other. We can tell they're good friends. Izzy cares about the buzzing and making sure her friend's okay, and she's also getting ready to vent about who she is stuck in a bathroom with. The fact that Isabella has a phone and is choosing to text her friend Bree and not her parents or police or somebody who could help her says a lot about her character. Isabella is the type of person who needs to be plugged into the school's social system. She wants to know what's going on at all times. She's interested in that drama. She's often a part of it. Also, throughout the course of the book, we learn she's more worried that her flavor of the month boyfriend might have cheated on her than she is about the fact that she's stuck in a boy's bathroom with three other people during a school shooting. What are her priorities? In this case, some people might say they're a little out of whack, but it's right for her character. We're seeing her view of the world. We're seeing what matters to her. This is really important, especially in first person. The whole point in using first person is to get that character's perspective, and Pignet does it well. If you're using a first person narrator, you might consider adding a similar form of formatting to show a bit more of their perspective. Now that you've seen a more traditional first person point of view format, I want to share Socially Awkward Xander's journal. Instead of a traditional first-person point of view format, Xander's perspective is shared through his journal. Xander is socially awkward. He has a hard time reading social cues, so his therapist and advisor recommended he keep a journal of all his social interactions 
so he can analyze them and figure out what he might have done better. In particular, he's not very good at reading facial expressions. So here's an example of one of Xander's journal entries. In social autopsy number 27, she, Mrs. O'Neill, held up two photos and asked, was your teacher looking more like this or this? When she said, oh, sorry, Xander, am I boring you with this lesson? I pointed to the one most like Mrs. Brown's. Mrs. O'Neill told me that Mrs. Brown was being sarcastic. Sarcastic. Adjective. Using irony to mock or convey contempt. Snide, scornful, smart-alecky. I wonder why it's okay for Mrs. Brown to speak sarcastically, but it's not okay for me to speak the truth. Either way, that social autopsy taught me a few things. Observations. 1. Don't yawn loudly in class, even if you are bored or tired. 2. Don't give feedback unless asked, even if it's something amazing that you think everyone should know. 3. If a teacher asks for feedback, nine times out of ten, it's probably a trick. Conclusion. Seek clarification. Ask just to be sure. Always. Through Xander's journal entries, readers get to understand why he acts the way he does, why he often comes across as cold and cruel and says the wrong thing in social situations. Xander can't really read facial expressions or tone of voice or body language, so he has a hard time interpreting what people really mean instead of taking what they say at face value. It's likely he has a condition like Asperger's, but Pignat never states exactly what's going on with Sander as far as that goes. It's really important that readers understand this aspect of Xander because later he's going to be taken advantage of by a key student and in order for that to happen and for readers to believe that it could happen in the way that it does, they need to know a little bit more about Xander and how he views the world, how he interprets it and misinterprets it. But Xander's point of view and his issues interpreting these facial expressions are not all bad. Because he has to work so hard to read body language, he develops a unique point of view as a photographer. He chooses to photograph those elusive facial expressions that show how a person is really feeling in that moment, instead of the happy pictures everyone posts on Facebook. He is more interested in the deep reality of a person. This does get him in trouble because he reveals some things through his photographs, but it also helps him and the other characters in the story. While he's stuck in the bathroom with the four other people, he shares some of his photos, and through those pictures, they get to know themselves and each other better, and they also work out who the mass shooter might be. All of this is because Xander had to work so hard to learn body language and facial expressions, so he chose to photograph them to help himself better understand. If you have a character who sees the world differently like this or might struggle with social interactions, Sometimes the format of your chapters can help show that better than words themselves. Next, let's cover Autistic Noah's poetic world view. Noah only gets a handful of chapters, but his have become my favorite. He is an older autistic student who's basically nonverbal. His chapters are either comprised of short poems or pictures that his aide uses to teach him the routines and what's expected of him at school. Noah really has a hard time when his routines are interrupted, like a mass shooting. This is an example of Noah unrolling a roll of paper towels while the other students in the room are having a conversation. So here's what Noah is thinking while he's doing that. Round and round and round and round and round and round, paper towel rolling rippling, brown paper, puddles on white tiles. Out! The paper needs out! Round and round and round and round and done! I love how Pignant's version of an autistic person's inner voice is poetry. I think that's such a unique perspective and take on that type of disorder. I also love how it shows that they're not stupid. They just think in a completely different way than other people do. 
because they think differently, they have different needs. In this case, no one needs his routines. And when his routines are interrupted, he's trying to find other things to fill up that time with, to distract himself. Because his are the only chapters that have pictures and poetry in them, his sections are instantly recognizable. It's always clear when it's Noah's point of view, as opposed to one of the other characters' point of view. These also emphasize how starkly different his perspective is from everyone else's, including Xander. Noah and Xander aren't the only ones who misinterpret things throughout the book, though. Even the three normal teenagers misunderstand each other, misspeak, have prejudices that they're not aware of. So Shooter is really about how people communicate, how we might bring bias without knowing it or be so self-centered that we can't see what's really going on. It's also about people growing and learning how to communicate differently so that they are able to do so more effectively with less misunderstandings. Format is one way you can show these different perspectives and how each character grows. Next, I want to share why an editor recommends writers study the format of Carolyn Pignett's Shooter. Not every story needs special formatting. Standard manuscript format is the standard because it works really well for most stories. However, sometimes a special format might enhance the perspective that you're going for. And you don't just have to use this formatting technique in multiple point of view stories or first person. It can work in omniscient, in third person or second, and in single point of view stories. If you're working on a story with multiple points of view, think about what each character's perspective is. What are their priorities? How is that going to impact the way they communicate their story to the reader? Are they self-centered and obsessed with their phone like Isabella? Do they have trouble reading social cues like Xander? Or do they think completely differently from everyone else, like Noah? You might consider adjusting that standard manuscript format in some way to reflect your character's unique worldview. If you're working on a story with different perspectives and multiple points of view, think about what's important to each of those characters. What are their priorities? Is it social connections and a phone like Isabella? Is it a schedule like Noah? Or do they perform social autopsies to better understand interactions like Xander? What is that priority for your character? Format not only helps distinguish who is speaking, but it also brings out this perspective. It shows your character's priorities, their worldview, the way they interpret what's going on around them. If perspective plays a large role in your story, consider experimenting with format to see how you can use the structure of your story to enhance that perspective. How have you adjusted your story's format? Share it in the comments below. And for more videos on format and other aspects of writing, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers. Because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a free point of view comparison chart, which will help you decide which point of view is best for your story. And now it's your turn to think about your character's perspective and consider using format to enhance it and ignite your ink.